Hey, what's up, you lot? Path here, and today I'm in a little bit of shock because on this channel we've finally hit 8,000 subscribers. Now that is absolutely crazy, that's amazing, and I haven't made one of these, you know, milestone videos in a long time, so I just wanted to make this video to say thank you so much for every single one of you who is subscribed to this channel. I really genuinely appreciate that you guys would take the time to subscribe if you think my content is you know, interesting enough that you'd want to come back and watch it again. So yeah, thanks very much. So in this video, I just quickly wanted to have a look at some of the most asked questions on Google uh, that I'll be able to help answer. So now, so now that I'm a big shot, let's see if... Uh, does path G... Oh. Okay, hmm. Path G. I am the second most searched name when I search for my own name, so <laughs> I will take that. Anyway, I think I need to expand my search criteria a little bit. So let's, uh, I'm a physicist, I can answer some physics related questions. Let's take a look at a few of those. How about something like, why do physicists, <laughs> why do physicists make fun of engineers? Why do physicists hate biologists? Uh, we'll come back to the use models one. Why do physicists hate engineers? Why do physicists use Fortran? Okay, um, I think, <laughs> as funny as this is, it's kind of a genuine problem, it's kind of a genuine question to ask. A lot of physicists make jokes about engineers and chemists and biologists, and quite often the only people that physicists don't make jokes about are mathematicians, and a little bit of that has to do with how pure you consider your field to be. Quite often maths is seen as the purest field to study because it's just pure logic, uh, and then it's physics, which is said to be applied mathematics. You take the stuff that you learn in maths and apply it to our real universe. Um, and then <laughs> and then people tend to see chemistry as applied physics because you take the principles of physics, specifically uh, quite a lot of quantum mechanics and everything that derives from that. And chemistry is born from that. And then biology is seen as applied chemistry because you take the principles of chemistry and apply it to give, you know, life forms, I guess. I don't know. Don't. Don't quote me on that. I have very little biology at this point in time. And engineers, because they actually genuinely do some useful stuff and we are a bit jealous of that. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that properly. Um, but we, <laughs> there are many physicists who like to mock engineers, chemists, biologists, so on and so forth. Looking at the third question on this list though, why do physicists use models? And uh, that's actually a very good question. As far as we know, or as far as I know, Models are basically the best way that we have of trying to work out how our universe works. Because here's the thing, our universe is a massive mystery. As well as this, the universe does what it wants to do. You know, not trying to personify the universe here, but what I'm saying is that the universe will do what it does, as obvious as that is. The only way that we have of figuring out how the universe works is to make models, is to make simplifications or to come up with ideas that really make sense to us that try and fit what we observe about the universe. So when somebody says to you that, you know, quantum mechanics is correct or general relativity is correct, well, quite a lot of them are based on models and uh, it's just a way of modeling how our universe works. And quantum mechanics and general relativity are so far the best ideas that we've had that fit the experimental evidence. That's not necessarily to say that the universe is doing exactly those things. It's just that we've come up with some maths, it seems to fit, so we think that's how it works. And we're actually, I'll go a little bit further than that. We're pretty sure that's how it works. And it's probably, this is probably not a good answer to the question though, is that why do physicists use models? It's just because it's the most convenient way of trying to work out what the universe does and why it does those things. And then looking at why do physicists use Fortran? I don't know, I've never used Fortran in my life. Okay, that's enough of that. Do physicists make a lot of money and <laughs> make money? Okay, do physicists make a lot of money? Some do, depends on what job they have. Do physicists make money? Like I said, some do, some don't. Do physicists travel a lot? Some do. <laughs> Quite often you'll see physicists who've completed their PhDs moving to postdoctoral research placements. So basically one or two year research placements where they're not a full on professor or a lecturer at a university, but they'll be, they'll be between a PhD and a lectureship, I guess is a good way of describing it. And in that position, you often have to move around quite a lot as a postdoc. So yeah, some, some physicists do travel a lot. Uh, some due to necessity and some because they've got great opportunities and they want to travel. So yeah, my answer to that is some do. Do physicists work at NASA? Some do. <laughs> do physicists know chemistry? Some do. Do physicists know programming? I think you know my answer to this question. Do physicists go crazy? Do physicists need real analysis? 
Do physicists need programming? Already answered that one. Do physicists use chemistry? No. Why is physics important? Well, it's about as important as anything else in the world, really, isn't it? It's, uh, it sort of answers the fundamental questions that humans have been asking for the longest time, uh, whilst also looking at stuff that we can actually tangibly observe. Additionally, physics teaches people how to, how to think, essentially. It's, uh, it's a good way of learning logic. So physics the subject is important because it teaches you different ways to think, and physics the concept is important because it helps us answer some of the deepest questions that we've had for a very long time. Why is physics so hard? because it's answering some of the deepest questions that we've had for such a long time. Very conflicting questions after one another. Why is physics interesting? Why is physics so boring? Physics is interesting. If you think it's boring, you've not been taught it correctly. Here's an interesting one. Why is physics male dominated? A multitude of reasons, I guess, but it'd be really cool to have an environment where female physicists feel comfortable enough to be able to go to the highest level in terms of you know, PhDs and postdocs and lectureships and professorships and so on. And hopefully this will change in the future so that anybody that wants to study physics uh, will be able to do it without having to worry about their gender or their sexuality or their race or anything like that. <laughs> Why are physicists so arrogant? I have no idea what you're talking about. It's just that we're the best people in the world. Why are physicists interested in studying Europa? Because they are. I, that's a really strange question. Of all the things you could ask, is there something I'm missing here? Have physicists been looking very specifically at Europa over the past few years? Why are physicists so weird? In my experience, it takes, um, it takes somebody that's not quite normal to, uh, to enjoy the subject. Why are physicists so smart? I don't know how true that is, actually. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I've, uh, if physicists are smart, then they've taken all of my quota of smartness. I don't know what, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Why are physicists called fizzlers? I've never heard physicists being called fizzlers. Let's Google that. Physicists fizzlers. A f <laughs> Since when? All right. Okay, I think I've gone through more than enough questions now, some in more detail than others, but um, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please do leave a thumbs up. Once again, thank you so much for 8,000 subscribers, I really genuinely appreciate it. I've got lots of video ideas on the way, it's just a matter of me finding the time to film these videos, to edit these videos, and to stick them out on YouTube. But rest assured, they are coming, so thank you so much for sticking around if you've been here a while, and if you're new, welcome to this channel. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I post lots of fun physics videos on this channel. My aim is to try and explain complicated physics concepts to lay people so you don't need to be an undergraduate physicist to understand my videos and yet you can understand some of the stuff that you study at undergraduate level or even higher. Because I feel like physics should be more accessible and I feel like there are lots of different concepts that aren't explained at the popular science level which could be explained at the popular science level with a little bit of effort and that's what I'm trying to do. So if you're into that kind of stuff then like I said please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button as well to be notified every time I upload and I'm going to ask you my weekly question of the week as well. Now normally my weekly question of the week is more self-reflective and you I try and get you to think about what you've been doing over the past few months or something that you need to do to improve an aspect of your life or so on and so forth. But today I'm going to ask you for a little bit of a favor. I want to ask you today about something to do with this channel. Now, a while ago, I made a video about the physics of the Harry Potter universe. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, then check it out up here. Basically, I talked through uh, different aspects of the Harry Potter universe and how we can apply our understanding of physics to them and come up with the laws of physics for that particular universe. So rather than trying to restrict the Harry Potter universe to the laws of physics that we have to obey, I tried to figure out what laws of physics they would have to obey in order for us to observe their universe the way we did in the books and in the movies. And what I want to ask you is what else would you like me to try and analyze in the same way? Now, I've already got a few ideas. For example, I want to analyze Tom and Jerry. The classic, classic kids cartoon is basically what I grew up on. And uh, I also want to do a couple more Harry Potter uh, videos like that, but I'm really interested to hear if there's some sort of fictional universe that you'd like me to try and analyze, because I have a lot of fun making those kinds of videos, so I'm looking forward to making a few of those. So that's my weekly question of the week. Let me know your answer in the comments below, and I'm looking forward to reading your responses. Aside from that, I want to start posting on Instagram again, where I post even more physics-y content, and on Twitter, where I post the worst physics jokes that I can ever think of. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at pathvlogs on both. And thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye-bye-bye.